Okay, now you're going to take your third assessments over logarithms and exponential functions, okay? So, this is easy to find a logarithm. It's asking you how many threes does it take to get nine? Probably two. So, x is two. You can just write two down as well. How many fives does it take to 125? Three, because that's 125. How many tens? Forget the fact that it's one tenth. How many tens would it take to get to a hundred? Well, two, but since it's one tenth, the exponent's negative. The logarithm is an exponent, basically. Okay, how many sixes to 36? You should probably know that in your head. It's two. Okay, now let's go to the back side. Okay, when I'm solving for variables, and the variables it part of in the pot in the exponent, we need to circle the power and then split the base from the exponent. Okay. Now, if it's happening on both sides, which it is, I want to make a graphic organizer here with my glasses. So my bases are 216, and what I'm trying to accomplish here is to get this so I can write this and this as the same thing. Okay, so 6. How many 6's would it take to get 216? Let's see if we can use a base 6. 36, and now we're at 216. So you bet, I can, I can cross this out, and that becomes 6 to the third power. So I have 6, that was already 6, so that's 2x plus 1. And this now is 6 to the third power, and I put a parentheses, because I'll be multiplying 3 by the power that was originally there. Okay, so I'm going to have 2x plus 1 equals 3x plus 9. Remember to multiply the 3 by 3 as well. Okay, get the, collect the x's. Okay, so 1 is equal to 1x plus 9, and collect the non-x's on the opposite side. So negative 8 equals 1x. Okay, so negative 8. Okay, next one. Now it's only happening on one side, so I know I can use my log over log. Okay, so 2 times x plus 7 equals log divided by log. So the base of 3 and then 48. So log 48 divided by log 3. So 3.52. So 2x plus 7 equals 3.52, and then I need to subtract 7 and divide by 2. Negative 1.74. Okay, now graphing. Okay, if we recognize x as a power, let's cut off the minus 4. We will plus 4 to my x's later. And I know if we have an x as an exponent, there is an asymptote line that we can't cross. So to find it, let's input numbers. I have no, the base is, a, is not a fraction, it's a whole integer. So I can go positives and then negatives, and then I'd use negative 10 to find my asymptote. So 3 times 2, and then I hit power, and I'm going to be replacing x with 2, and then adding 5. That's 17. This one's easy. 2 to the 1 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5 is 11. Okay. This one's pretty easy, too. Anything to the 0 power is 1 times 3 is 3, plus 5 is 8. Use your calculator if you're not confident in your mental math, okay? 3 times 2 to the negative 1 power, that's a half, so it's 3 halves. It's going to be 6.5 because you add 5 to it. 3 times 2 to the power of negative 2 plus 5 is 5.75. Okay, 
Now you're at your negative 10. Let's see what happens with that. I'm guessing it's going to be 5 because there's a 5 being added. Yeah, 5. Okay, so the asymptotes 5, and um, we need to graph these. Now remember, I got a plus 4 to all the x's. So that's 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so let's go by twos. The asymptote would be here if I'm going by twos, halfway between four and six. So six, seventeen, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, five, eleven, one, two, three, four, five, two, four, six, eight, ten, right there. Four, eight, one, two, three, four, two, four, six, eight. And then it goes down right there. Okay. All right. Now, story problems were a big part of this standard. Okay. I deposit $500 in a bank account that earns 4% interest compound quarterly. How much will this be in this account? So here's a key phrase here. I want to know the money it's worth. But compound quarterly, I have an equation I can just write, okay? I have $500 times, some of you put in plus, that's totally ignorant because it's 500 times a percent. One plus, now my percent's 0 .04, and I divide by the quarterly of four, and then outside I transition this four, and the number of years is 10, Okay. And then we don't know where it ends at, so that's why. Now, the reason why you divide, it's like you're dividing it by four, but it happens 40 times, because four times a year for 10 years, the 40 times. Okay, so let's um, put that as 40, probably. And then let's divide and add one. So 0 0.04 divided by four plus one, 1 1.01. So the parentheses is replaced with 1.01 to the 40th power equals y, and then y is by itself, that's screaming solve me, 500 times 1.01 .01 divided by 40, 744, I just thought of something weird, but I don't want to say it on camera, okay, all right, Okay, this one. A school's population is increasing at a constant rate of 5% each year. If there are currently 800 students in the district now, how many years will it take for that amount to reach 1,000? Okay, so you're finding the years, but it's not quarterly, so you better generate your own thing. Okay? So, years and students. X and Y. So per students per year, well, there, there doesn't exist a students per year. It's different every year, but it's by a percent, so plus 5%, okay? Okay, so that goes in a curve. We have a beginning point, and we're going to multiply that by, by percent, which is known as the growth factor to the x power, because we're multiplying repeatedly, so that's why we need a power. Okay, so I have 800 students to begin with. Get your G out. You don't need the P here because you have a percent. You take 100% plus 5%. Yeah, I know I do 1 plus P a lot, but or minus P, but when I have a percent, I don't. I take 100 plus a percent, and that's 105%. Okay, so that growth factor is 1.05. So I'm going to be taking 800 multiplied by 105% repeatedly every year, so to the x power equals y. 1,000 students, that equals y, dude, okay? Okay, so i got to solve for a power here, a bit, uh, exponent here, so circle the power. The whole thing's called the power. This is the base, this is the exponent. Those are the two parts to a power. Okay, so I know that um, the x is going to equal to the log divided by log, and I know the base is on bottom, but I have this 800 multiplying the power, so I need to divide by 800, not subtract, okay? 
and 1,000 divided by 800 is 1.25. Okay, so if I divide, I don't even need to divide by 4 here. That's my answer. Log 1.25 divided by log 1.05. Okay, I got 4.5, 4.6. 4 4.5 sounds better. Okay, about four and a half years, a little over four and a half. Okay, team's attendance has increased at a relatively constant rate for the past eight years. Eight years ago, the average attendance was 40,000 people. Now the average attendance is up to 50,000 people. Find the rate of increase. So that means find the percentage. That will be a 1 plus or minus P. Okay, no quarterly, so we have to generate our own system here. So I have years and people. X is years, Y is people. So per people, per year. I don't know it, but it's by a percent, okay? And it's going up, so plus P. Okay, so I have my initial number of people multiplied, because it's by a percent, the growth factor to the X power equals Y. Okay, so let's eliminate the growth, or no, first let's put in, we started with 40,000 people. I'm not really, yeah, okay, never mind. Okay, so the growth factor, 1 plus P in parentheses. Okay, so now we can write an equation, 40,000 multiplied by 1 plus p repeatedly so to the power of x equals y p is not going anywhere because that's what we're solving for so the x is replaced with 8 and the y is replaced with 50,000 okay now you're not solving for a for an exponent here p is not in the exponent the exponent's 8 p is not in the exponent but what P is, it's just in a parentheses, and everything in that parentheses to the eighth power. So I would want to use Q. So 40,000 Q to the eighth power equals 50,000. I make a little box because I'm going to have to come down here with the 1 plus P. Okay, so I divide by 40,000 first, not subtract, you divide. Q to the eighth. I take 50 grand divided by 40 grand. And I got 1.25. So I solved this by finding the eighth root. Okay. Remember, you can find that by taking it to the one eighth power. Okay. 1.03. What's kind of nice here is I don't have that negative 1, so I can just minus 1. And 1p one equals 0 0.03. And we don't really need to divide if it's positive 1. It's 3%. Okay, hope that floats your boat.